Just a real quick uh, uh, update to the uh, 3403. Uh, you might remember this uh, uh, little cover. Uh, I thought, well, while I have it off, while I have it open, I may as well go and um, take this off and have a look what was under it. And here's what I see that's under it. Let me see if I can bring that over. And now let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let's have a look what we found here. Look at that. Do you see that up there? Oh, I just want to drop this off the, the table. Just right there. That's a capacitor that has basically spilled its guts. So that's not uh, a particularly good sign to, to see. And so, you know, I wonder if that has an impact. Well, let's go take a, a quick look at the circuit diagram. So if we put uh, the little cover back on here, you can see that that's marked as C1. And so what we have here is we have C1, which is this little Teflon capacitor here, hooked up to a point, and it looks like the, all the capacitors are coming back down, and I can see the trace from here coming back into C1, you know, or connecting there. So they basically are uh, all linked together. And so if we look at the schematic, and here is the, the schematic here, you'll see that the input comes in, and I cut it off a little bit, and it comes into this little filter area here. Now, uh, those three capacitors, C1, which is the little Teflon, C2 and C3, are all in parallel here. And if uh, C2, which I think that one is, because if you look at it, it's the, that's C1, that's going to be C2, that's going to be C3. You know, so if that's C2, if that's died and effectively just become a little resistor, then what we're going to have here is what should be the DC path. When the DC gets turned on, K1 will actually energize here and it will connect the path from the input through R1, through K1, because DC can't go through the capacitor, 1K, and then a 9.5 mega ohm resistor. Well, if that's gone, you know, to become, you know, another resistor, then we'll have another path coming across through here. And so that, you know, is going to create an issue for us. I don't know if it's actually the problem that we've got, because remember the, um, there was that weird offset and if you measure the output of this custom I see here, which is this guy just here, you know, if you measure the output that's coming out here, um, you're still reading, um, you know, this is the custom I see just, just here. Let me move that across. If you measure the output of that custom I see you over here, you're still reading, you know, I'm still reading a couple hundred milli, uh, like a hundred milli uh, volts coming out. So I don't know if it's really the problem, but it clearly can't be helping. So we're going to take that out and, you know, uh, replace it with a uh, another uh, uh, capacitor. I don't happen to have a 3.9, so I'm just going to take it out uh, and then we can see how, what, uh, what goes on and whether or not it actually makes any difference there. So... Let's just, uh, uh, let me just get that uh, going and I'll take it out. There you go, you the actual little uh, leg just came completely off. All right, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just Move this out of the road. Let me put my yeah, I don't know really what happened there, but let's just move that out of the road. Now, they shouldn't be actually involved um, with the DC value. So let's zoom this back out. 
flip this back over, put our signal generator back on. Let's turn that on. Let's set it at 0.5. Well, so we're still reading similar uh, sort of values as before. So I don't know if that's made any difference at all. So it's a problem, need to fix it. But uh, I don't think it's had any real impact on uh, on what's going on here. All right. Well, there'll be uh, a little bit more uh, later on when I take uh, more of a look. All right. Catch you later. Bye.